So here are coins of Costa Rica. I got this at an estate sale. I think what happened was, this was like a couple years ago, when I was going to buy a bigger item, I said, well, I'll buy that item if you throw this set on top of it, because the actual value of these coins isn't very, isn't very much. So I said, hey, it's also missing one too. So you say, hey, it's also missing one. So this is why I got these uh, Costa Rican coins. So I've been watching a lot of videos on numbers, and I've been kind of looking more at um, certain cultural things after the, the stone of y the Yap stones. Got me interested in learning more about money in more primitive cultures. And of course, I'm not using the word primitive in any negative manner. It's just that, you know, it's more primitive if they don't have, like, um, certain technologies. Um, so one thing I came across with both numbers and with, with counting is this video talking about complex numbers where the, the, the guy was saying that just because there aren't words for these numbers don't mean they don't exist. And just because you don't have a use for them, that means they don't exist. And he was using an example about how there are some primitive um, cultures where their language does not have a word for three and higher, where there's a word for one, two, and many, and that's it. And this guy was referring to, to a book, and in the book that author was saying how when he went to some primitive culture and he wanted to do some bartering, you know, he wanted to barter like um, four, four, four of something to two of something, and he couldn't because there's no word for four and he was saying this is impossible and so forth. And that story did not make any sense to me. Because in any culture, even, even the most basic language, you would have a need to count to higher than two. For example, women, right? Women in a lot of these primitive cultures, I mean, many of them have more than two kids. And they're obviously, they would have to say, how many kids do you have? It wouldn't be many kids if they had three, four, or five. They would need a, a way to express it. And that was the problem of that book is the anthropologist who visited there assumed that because there was not a word for higher than two, they had no way of keeping track of things or expressing numbers higher than two. So I did some simple Googling and I found that um, in uh, um, these cultures, they would do things like here's from one Aboriginal tribe that only had a word for one and two and no word for higher than two. But this is what they did. They had the word one, two, three was two and one. Four was two and two. Five was hand. They would simply say, how many, how many kids do you have? Oh, I have hand kids. One, two, three, four, five. They'd say, oh yeah, we, we understand hand. You're five fingers hand, right? And they would say, well, if you have another kid, how many kids would you have now? Oh, we'd have hand and one, right? And they would say, wow, um, well, what what would happen if I added these two stack? If I had a, a stack full of of stones and there was hand in that stack, and you had two stacks, well, I'd have two hand, right? So they had ways of expressing all these numbers, right? They they would say hand hand one for eleven, right? And obviously it was it, that that's harder than saying eleven, but they had a way of expressing it. And when they did barter, they could barter things like three for five, right? They, they, they could, so they had a way of doing this, and they understood the concept of many numbers. The problem was this anthropologist who didn't understand the culture and language completely just assumed that they only had one, two, and many, and that they couldn't even barter. And when he tried to barter without um, investigating further, he, he, he said, aha, you see? No, it's because he didn't know the language and culture. He, could, he should have said two and two for, for, for two and one for, to, to mean three and four. And that is important, an important point about language and culture and misrepresenting. So what we've seen often, like, you know, we have a base 10 system because, we you know, people have 10 fingers. It seems that this is a universal thing. When, when different cultures and languages all over the world that are not connected, when they decide to do counting systems, they always seem to go base 10 because there's 10 hands and you count on the fingers, right? Um, and this, this has a big relation to silver. As I think all of you know, in many languages, the word for money is silver. Now, I want to go one step further. So, 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 so going back to numbers, if you look at English, right, um, we have a word for first and second, right? And the word first and one don't seem related. The words for two and second don't th seem related. But three and third sound the same. Four and fourth, right? So maybe in the English language, when they first start off, they start off with a one, two, many kind of system. And then when they added numbers, they added in three, four, 
three, four, five, third, fourth, fifth, right? Maybe the same kind of thing happened in English, and maybe at one time, in, a, in the primitive English roots or whatever, they actually had a system where they would say um, one and two and something like hand. I don't know. I'm just guessing. But linguistically, we get clues of the past. So I think what pl plato pl is, is the word for um, money. It also means silver. And I think what happened is they, as technology increased and the technology of mining happened, they would add in words like that for money. Like, for example, in these primitive cultures where they don't have that technology of mining or metalworking, um, they wouldn't have gold or silver for money. Sure, they might find some gold or silver in some rocks, but without that technology, they would not have a way of processing the ores. So, in those cultures, gold and silver weren't money. And simply bringing gold and silver to a primitive culture, would, they would not say, Oh, ho, we have found some new money. Well, because the culturally, there is no link there to that kind of money. So so silver is money. It's a huge cultural component. I don't know how humans have been on the earth for 300,000 years or longer, but for that period of time, maybe 5,000 or 10,000 years, silver was money. So what percent of the human experience had gold and silver as money? Well, if it's 300,000 years where humans were humans and, you know, 10,000 years it's silver, that's a very small percentage of the human experience having gold and silver as money. So the word silver being money probably came in much later in the game where all of a sudden they had this silver and they used it as money and they, 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 they said, okay, well, just, just like hand was five for this primitive culture, silver is money, right? It doesn't mean that this always means, you know, that just because um, hand is five, you always have five fingers, right? Because some people might have a mishap with an ax or with a, a wolf and they have four fingers and, well, how, what, you know, so hand might, for that person, might be four. Or I, I hear stories of people born with six fingers, right? I mean, in general, five means hand, but that doesn't mean every hand has five fingers. So when you hear, because the words silver and money are the same, it means silver is always money. Silver is money in periods of time. For 300,000 years, silver wasn't money. They might have seen some silver in some rocks, but they didn't have their technology. And there's cycles, right? We've seen cycles where, you know, um, you look in China for hundreds of years, and like the, 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 over a thousand years ago, paper was money and silver, they didn't use silver, but it was still used as a form of wealth and they recognized it as wealth. That's a key thing, is that the, the, the paper was used as money in China, but they recognized that the value of silver. And, and in fact, I think um, I read that they made it illegal to use the silver as money. You had to turn in your money and they gave you paper or something, right? So um, we have different cycles. And the, the key thing here is not to be trapped within a culture or language for things like um, concepts and money. Because if you, if you really want to preserve your wealth, you have to step outside of the culture and, 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 and do things yourself, not get trapped in there, not make assumptions. That guy who assumed because there was no word for three, they couldn't barter for things higher than two. He just didn't, he didn't look deeper and see, oh yeah, two and one is three, hand is five, ten is two hands, right? Th these are things to really step back. And at the time, that was a so-called expert who said that. There was a so-called expert anthropologist who declared this culture has no way of doing barter higher than two, and he was completely mistaken, all right? So that's kind of a, a word of be wary when it comes to things like culture, language, and money. You'll have some, 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 some experts proclaim things, and they could be wrong because of faulty assumptions, not looking deeper. And this is both in academia, the mainstream media, and in the alternative media, right? We have experts in the alternative media who fall in these traps just like the experts in the mainstream media do. So you kind of have to be your own expert and look beyond things like language and culture. Thanks for watching.